So an equation that can be written in the form y equals mxb, where m, m and b are constants. Let me give you an example. So right, right next to it, what if put dx? Example, y equals 3x plus 2. Notice how that's an equation of two variables. Right now, the phone's got to be put away, earphones off, and get that first stamp and second stamp. Notice how m, m right here would be 3. Look, that's a constant, it's a number. b would also be 2. That's a, a constant. So m and b are numbers, and x and y are the two variables that the equation is in. That's why they call it in the, a linear equation in two variables. Okay? So far, so good. Linear function. Next word. A linear function, a function whose graph is a non-vertical line. The rate of change is always constant. I'm going to write that down. A function whose graph is a non vertical line, the rate of change is always constant. Nonlinear function last word for the day. Actually, no, second last word. A nonlinear function is a function whose rate of change is not constant. The graph is not a line. So we're not going to define all the words. We're only going to find one more word after this one, the, the solution of a linear equation in two variables. And then we're done for the day. But I'm going to write this down because I want to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So go down where it says notes here. All the way down it says notes. I'm going to put C graph paper. C graph paper, because I want you to use your graph paper for the first example. Put C graph paper. So when you file your notes in your binder, it's going to say C graph paper for the first example. So now bust out that graph paper that I gave you. And let's go let's go to write example one. So right now you're on your graph paper now. Example one. Example one says, here we go. Tell whether the tables describe a linear function or nonlinear function. You could take up a lot of space here because don't worry about saving space on this paper. Tell whether the tables describe a linear or nonlinear function. So I'm going to give you two tables. I'm going to throw two tables right here. I'm going to give you table A. And let me give you table B.
So tell what the table is described of non a linear and nonlinear function. And here's table A. X, Y, X, Y. So it's an input-output table like we were used to. We talked about this last week. Nothing, no surprises here. It's just that I'm going horizontally now instead of I'm up, down, up uh, vertically, I'm going horizontal. So the first inputs are 3, 6, 9, and 12. Okay. Uh, and we have the outputs are 36, 30, 24, and 18. So far, so good. All right. Table B is 1, 3, 5, 7 on the inputs. 1, 3, 5, 7. And the outputs are 2, 9, 20, and 35. So on table A, every input value is increasing by how much? Every input value is increasing by how much on table A? Input. I'm going to output up. I'm going to input right now? Oh, three. Right. Look, so go from here to here, put a little loop. This is put plus three. Notice how every input is increasing by three. Look at that. And Mr. Hurtado kind of jumped the gun to my next question. What are the outputs? How are the outputs behaving, the, the change? Uh, Hurtado, what's going on there? Negative six. Negative six. Notice how the change of the outputs, the rate of change from here to here, is negative six. Negative six. Negative six, notice. So the rate of change here is constant. Go to put the word constant. It doesn't change. It's, it's, every time the inputs increase a certain amount, the change is always the same for the outputs. So we call that a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. Do that in your notes. Therefore, would this be linear or nonlinear? Linear or nonlinear? Argument, please. That's it. Perfect argument. We just wrote it down about three minutes ago. Look at the word linear function. It's a, a constant rate of change. So we're going to put linear. Linear function. No big deal. So far, so good. Let's look at table B. Is that linear? Let's see. The inputs are increasing by how much? Two. Look at it. Put plus two. Three to five is plus two. Three to five is plus five to seven plus two. Now let's look at the outputs. From two to nine, what is that? That's an increase of how much? Seven. So there should be seven here if it's linear. But nine to twenty is not seven. That's going to be plus 11. So notice there's already a change. The rate of change is not constant. It's different. It's variable. It fluctuates. It's a different kind of function. And now here it's 15. Notice. So put not constant. This is not a linear function then. Put nonlinear. Linear functions have a constant rate of change. That's why they form lines when you graph them. Line, linear, the word linear has the word line in it. So you have your graph paper. I'm going to go to graph these puppies. Maybe not. That was cool. Give me a second here. Uh, 
give me a y axis of f x. Um, what was the first order pair for the table A? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go by sixes. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36 for the y values because they're big. And the x values were what? Three? What was the first one? By threes. I'm going to go by threes here. See that? I can make my tick marks on the graph paper be as big as I want. Just make sure that they're all the same. If you're going to make from here to here six, don't make the next line a different number. You got to stay consistent on these tick marks. They're all six. You can make them whatever you want, but you got to stay consistent all the way through. So the first ordered pair was 336. Plot that with me for table A. Six what? The next one, uh, what is? 30, yeah. 9, 24, 12, 18, and that was it. Look at, I got a line, you guys. Hence, linear. That's why they're called linear functions. I just graph the table. No mystery to this. This is math one. It's not, we're getting, not getting too crazy right here. Let's graph table B now. That was table A. What was the input and output for table B, the first one, uh, Codis? The first order pair for the table B? Okay, there we go. Let's do table B now. The highest one was 20? Alright, I'm going to go by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And we're going by ones, huh? All right. Let's graph this. Notice how when we graph it, it's not going to be a line. It's going to be nonlinear. There's not going to be a line form. The first one was one, two. Plot that with me. One, two. I'm going to estimate it about right here. It's not close to that. It's less than five, obviously, and less than halfway. Three, nine. Right below ten. I got five, twenty. You can see a curve already forming. And I got seven, thirty-five. Seven, thirty-five is way up here. It's going to be a curve. Okay, this would be more exponential. We're going to get into that later on when we get to math three. Um, actually, no, we do cover a little bit of exponential. But notice the curve. Different kind of function for part B, for table B rather. Nonlinear. Linear versus nonlinear, easy. Last word of the day and we're done. Question so far. The last word of the day is a solution of an equation in two variables. There we go. This up here. Our last word. There we go. Solution of a linear equation in two variables is an ordered pair x, well, I'll put x, y that makes the equation true when substituted into the equation. An ordered pair x, y that makes an equation true when substituted into the equation. One more, we'll do one example of this and we're done. 
an ordered pair x, y that makes an equation true. But makes, not make, but makes the equation true. When substituted into the equation. Now all the way down at the bottom, underneath where it says we put C graph paper. So there's some more space. So underneath that, let's go to put example two now. So we're on the we're on the normal paper now. Away from graph paper, we're on the your note paper, your note guide. I'm going to put example two. I'm going to put determine determine whether the ordered pair is a solution to the function. Yes, this is example two. So we're at the bottom of the note guide now. You're not on your graph paper. Underneath what we wrote, see graph paper, we're going to put example two now on the, on the note guide. Last example. So here's a function, y equals negative 8x plus 7. And look at the order pair I'm going to throw at you. Negative 3, negative 3. That's for A. And then for B. I'm going to throw one more order pair. Um, negative 1, 15. So I'm throwing two order pairs at you. I want to know what's the solution. So what does solution mean? Well, we just wrote it down about three minutes ago. A solution is an ordered pair that makes an equation true when substituted to the equation. Let's do it. So I'm going to put in Dodger Blue, since they're going to win the World Series next year. All right, wherever I see x and y, I'm replacing it with negative 3 and negative 3. Watch. Negative 3 equals negative 8 times negative 3 plus 7. Let's see if it becomes true. Wherever I saw x, I replaced it with negative 3. Wherever I saw y, I replaced it with negative 3. Let's see if it becomes true. In other words, the left and right sides have to be the same. Negative 3 equals, what's negative 3 times, or negative 8 times negative 3? Positive or negative? Right, negative times negative 3, positive 24, plus a 7. Look at this, negative 3 is negative 3 equal to 31. Is that true? If you think that negative 3 equals 31, there's a psychologist on campus. I can write a pass. You can go talk to the psychologist. There's something wrong with you. Why is there a negative 3 equal to a positive 3? Well, let's see if the ordered pair was y was negative 3, huh? So look at it. We're right. Not true. Therefore, I'll put the little three little dots. When you take logic class, like upper logic in co college, there's the three dots like this means therefore. Therefore, not a solution. So all the three dots means therefore. I'm too lazy to write out therefore. Yeah, just from now I know that three dots mean therefore. That's your conclusion. So this is not true, right, Alvarado? Therefore, the ordered pair this is not a solution because it rendered a false statement. Then they're both not true. They're both not solutions. And that's that's okay, huh? Let's see. I'll use angel red. Notice I'm replace y with 15 and x with negative 1 into the function of it. Y equals negative 8x plus 7. Right, Tapia? You're stressing me out if you're not taking notes. You give me an ulcer. Help me out. Notice I'm replacing y with 
15 and x with negative 1. So I got 15 equaling negative 8 times negative 1 plus 7. So I got 15 equaling negative times a negative, I want to say, is a positive if my coffee is kicked in. Right? So I got 15 equaling 15. Is that true? 15 equal to itself. Kick to it. I was going to send you a psychologist right now. Mm -hmm. This is true. Therefore, 1, negative 1, 15, the order pair is a solution. Dr. Roland.